The goal for this video is to show a concise step-by-step run-through of how to pull the Alice M1000 transmission from GM trucks. This is a 2003 crew cab standard bed, so keep in mind some of the steps may vary for your application, but the big picture will remain the same. There are some tools I'll be using to make sure the process goes as smoothly as possible, so I'm going to quickly cover that before we get into the meat and taters. I'll be using a compartmentalized bin to label and keep fasteners and little parts organized, an Alice in 1000 service manual, a notebook for any miscellaneous notes, and I wrote a checklist containing the major steps, socket sizes, fastener locations, diagrams, torque specs, and other handy info. And I'll put a link for the free download for that in the description. And before we get it up on the lift, I'm just going to disconnect the battery. Uh, you'll likely have to do two but I only have the one because of the compound turbo kit that I built. There's a coolant tank in the way now, so I'll just be removing this one. First, begin by draining the transmission fluid. And no, that's not the color you should be seeing. I'm gonna have to have a word with the owner of this thing. Next, remove the drive shafts, both rear and front if you have four wheel drive. Make sure you chalk the wheels or otherwise prevent it from rolling and put the vehicle in neutral. I'm marking the drive shaft positions, which isn't strictly necessary, but I'd like to minimize vibration issues if possible. Start disconnecting the transfer case harness, being careful not to break the detent tabs. Remove the transfer case bolt that secures the harness bracket, and I just finger thread this bolt back into the hole rather than putting it in the bin. There's another connector for that harness that runs along the top, which we'll want to disconnect. Carefully pry the shift cable off the actuator, and it's not necessary to remove the cable from the bracket, but I did just to move it all out of the way, make it easier. Remove the two NSBU connectors. These were tighter than Conway Twitty's tight-fitting jeans, so be careful not to damage the connector or the housing body like I did. Now it's time for the harness bracket on the rear of the transmission to come off. The exhaust hanger bracket needs to come off next to access the main transmission harness, which comes out by pinching the two tabs. The transmission then needs to be supported, at least on this configuration of cabin chassis. I don't know if I assembled the jack wrong or if I'm missing something, but I didn't like the idea of the 350 pound transmission resting on the pan concentrated on those four bolts, so I cut a plate to distribute the load and hopefully avoid adding four new drain holes. Now that the transmission is supported, the cross member and mount bushing can be removed. This is one of those things that may change based on the year and configuration of your vehicle. Remove the transfer case nuts and prepare to drop it. I left one nut on a few threads so I could split the case and let it drain before I committed to pulling it. Again, fluid should not be that particular hue. I also put together a pump rub kit that I'll be installing in my transfer case while it's out to prevent the common GM four-wheel drive failure, which I'll do a separate video to cover, and I'll put a card for that video here. You can find the pump rub kit and other parts including V-bands, ring compressors, and AN fittings on my website as well as Amazon. Links for everything in the description. Remove the speed sensors from the transmission, and there will be one on the bell housing, one on the main case, and one on the tail housing if you have a two-wheel drive truck. Here's the diagram from the ASTG service manual. I had to remove the downpipe V-band since I have a larger custom exhaust, though you can skip this if yours is still stock. This is to make room for the cooler line removal in a future step. For now I'm just preparing the lines by removing the dust covers and the clips, and I'm hitting them with a wire brush to reduce any debris that might be able to get into the system when I remove the lines. Now it's time to start working on the starter. I found it easiest to come in from the front with a long stack up of extensions. The end of the extensions starts up front by the front sway bar and snakes its way back to the starter bolts. After the bolts have been removed, either remove the starter completely or just push it up and out of the way. 
The AN fittings in this shot, again, are specific to my build with the custom compound turbo kit I built, and you won't have to worry about those being in your way. Remove the inspection plate from the bell housing to access the torque converter. Either turn the engine over at the harmonic balancer, or do like I did and use a screwdriver to slowly roll it over. If you have a fancy triple disc converter or something, you might be worried about marring it, but I'm not, as mine is stock and this won't affect the structural integrity. I found it helpful to pry at the converter bolt lugs when they rolled around. With the same extension stack up used for the starter, I'll start removing the converter bolts through the starter hole, again coming in from the front sway bar area. Feel up through the starter hole for the converter bolts as you roll it around, there are six in total. Be as careful as you can not to drop the bolts down into the bell housing once they're loose using a magnet, RTV, dot of super glue, stuffing a rag into the gap, or some other way to keep the bolts from falling. Once the converter bolts are all out, remove the fuel line brackets. After the bell housing fuel line bracket is off, there is a bell housing bolt and stud behind it. The rest of the nine bell housing fasteners can then be removed, and some of them have other brackets attached to them. The diagram in the Built Bottom End Performance document shows where all the fasteners and brackets are for reference, at least on this year and configuration, and it should be similar to others. The dipstick bracket has one nut near the up pipe bellow and another higher up. Both have bell housing studs behind them. I used an extension stack up to reach all of them with the impact gun from behind the tail housing of the transmission. The very top of the bell housing bolt has the breather bracket on top of it. I let the jack down a little bit to angle the transmission down enough to access it with the extension stack up. Then remove the bell housing fastener behind it along with the other two toward the top. The last one is sort of hidden right above the starter and below the dipstick bracket. After all nine bell housing fasteners are removed, pull the dipstick and the cooler lines. Then carefully split the transmission housing from the block and make sure the converter splits neatly from the flex plate. Watch for the harness, tubes, or anything else that might catch on the transmission and slowly pull it all the way and let it down. Removing a transmission can be a daunting job, especially on vehicles like these, but it really is something anyone can do. My hope is that this video, checklist, and tips will help give you what you need to do this job and others on your own, and hopefully have some fun doing it. Let me know if you found this helpful or what I could improve down in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching, be kind, and remember not everything's black and white.